Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we're doing something really cool, and it's a problem that plagues a lot of us as photographers because the camera's kind of limited to the highlight range and the shadow range. A lot of the time you don't get a whole lot of detail in your shadows, but the camera does capture this detail much of the time. You just kind of have to know how to bring it back out. And what this is going to help do is areas that are like too dark or even like black where you're not seeing any detail, this is going to help you be able to like bring that detail back and really make your image just better. That's just what it's going to do. It's just going to make it better. So let's go ahead and get into it. This image is by, uh, I believe it's uh, Tajird uh, uh, Dusche. Sorry, I'm not the best most world traveled person, uh, but I try. So what we're going to do, this is a great, great image. I uh, really, really like it. Um, the only thing that I would like to see with this image, and this was probably edited um, for a certain style. So this is definitely like the editing of the style where it's like very low saturation, like just a little bit of detail and everything like that. It's probably edited for that. So it's not a mistake of the person who is editing it. I'm just going to show you a different way to do it. Um, some of this detail, like, you know, right up here, things like that, I would just be able to like to see what this is a little bit more. I just get a hint of it, and it's interesting, and uh, I'd just like to see what is that a little bit more. Um, also, just, you know, like subtle little things, like the eyes, maybe we can bring those out as well. The hair got like a little bit desaturated, and it's losing a little bit of its like natural vibrance as well. So I'm going to see what we can do about getting some of that detail back there. And then we could add a little bit of color to the face. I understand this is probably color was taken away, but I'm just going to add some back because why not? <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and make that invisible and uh, let's get our start. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to go over curves adjustment layer. There we go. And click right here in the middle and just kind of bring it up right about there. And now you can actually see all this really nice detail that's there in, in the shadow area. So we can kind of like pick and choose what we'd like to do with this detail. Now the other cool thing you can do is let's bring it right up about there. I'm going to click on my layer mask and we're going to go to apply image. So we're going to use this several times today. Apply image is basically like it takes a snapshot of your, uh, of your image as it sees it and it puts that on the layer mask and that helps with blending a lot. It helps to like determine where this layer is going to be, where the darks are, where the lights are. So that's basically why we're doing it. I'm going to click on my layer mask. We're going to go to image and down here to apply image. Okay. Now you can see you have a couple of options here. I would leave all these as they are merged RGB multiply. But you do have the invert option up here. So you can click on either invert or not invert. And in this case, we're going to choose this invert option. And what that's going to do is it's just going to make your shadows quite a bit brighter. Now, in a lot of these areas, it's going to look relatively weird, right? Like you don't want it to be visible over the eyes and things like that. But up here, you can see what a good job that really has done at bringing out that detail. Now, it's going to leave your highlights alone, which is really nice. So if I hold down shift and click on this, you can see there's before the layer mask and after the layer mask. So really, really cool. Now I'm going to click on my layer mask and uh, let's just paint black with a regular brush right over her face because we obviously don't need this to be visible uh, right over her face. There we go. Right around there, we'll darken some of the hair up and things like that. And we can darken up the edges just a bit. There we go. And get some of the blends pretty well. So that's basically what, what we have now. And, no, I kind of liked it in her, in her lips there. Bring a little bit less of that down there. Okay. Very cool. So that's basically getting our getting our shadow detail and like bringing that up in brightness. Now we can do the same thing with our highlights again. So I'm just going to repeat the same thing, uh, but this time we're not going to invert it. So I'm going to go to curves. There we go. Let's click right here in the middle. Bring that up there, and then we're going to click on image and down to apply image. And then this time we won't click on invert. There we go. And hit OK. So this time you can kind of choose like where do you want even more detail to show up, and it's totally up to you guys. Um, I'm just going to you know what? I don't want it visible most places. I just want it visible like in a couple of places. So um, what I would normally do is actually just create a group with this layer. So group it with itself and then put a layer mask on the group. And then I can just start painting black on the layer mask where I don't want this to be visible. And the reason I do this is because it actually like preserves the original layer mask that is obviously has a lot of detail, right? So it's preserving this layer mask. But by putting basically a layer mask on another layer mask, um, it allows me to get that detail back. There we go. So it's just a couple areas where I think it, you know, kind of looks nice. There we go. And up there. All right. Looking really good. So let's go ahead and shift click all the three of those. And we can just see that's like our shadow detail. So really in not too long of a time, like let's see, this was one of your images where all the shadows were like so dark, you couldn't see any information. Use the same exact things that I did here 
and then you can get back a ton of detail in your shadows. So let's just double click there and I'll call that shadows. All right, so we've done the shadows. Now let's take care of the hair and then we're gonna do um, the subject space as well. So let's grab a curves adjustment layer for the hair and hair is usually like a version of brown, basically. And brown is green and red mixed together, right? Like my hair is just, has a ton of brown, so it looks black. But if you were, <laughs> there's some brown in there. <laughs> so let's go to our red channel, kind of crank that up a little bit, and then our green channel, and crank that up a little bit. And then you're going to get some, you know, some nice tones in there that really do look like realistic hair colors. So red and green, keep that in mind. That's what, that's what you want to combine. There we go. And now I'm gonna hit, I hit Command I on my layer mask to make it a black layer mask. And now what I'm doing is just painting back white on this layer mask and it's bringing this color back. So I'm doing this for two reasons. Uh, the first is I just like to see a little bit more color here in the hair. But the second is it's kind of like serving to be a complementary color to what's in the background. So you can see there in the background we have more of like, you know, what you see is like a bluish tone. And uh, this hair, I'm going to even extend it up there just a little bit for artistic reasons, nothing else. Um, the hair is really just kind of like doing, creating a complementary color. All right. If it's not exactly the right color, which in this case it's not, you can click here and just kind of like drag your colors around. There we go. And it's a little bit too strong, I feel. So we're going to lower our opacity just a little bit. I just didn't like it so, so grayscale. But it's a personal preference and everyone edits images differently. So my opinion is just as valid as anyone else's. <laughs> All right, and vice versa, your opinion is just as valid as mine. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab a curve adjustment layer. Let's bring some uh, color here in the skin. I'm gonna go to the red channel, click and drag that up again, and then I'm gonna go to my blue channel and drag that down. And that's gonna give us that like nice orange color. There we go, and you can make this visible on the whole thing. I'm gonna hit Command I on this and just paint it visible here in the skin. So you really don't have to go too far, but what you can see I was able to do is just kind of like warm the skin up a little bit, and it's just going to make it look a little bit more like alive and fresh. Let's bring some of that into the hair as well. There we go. So just warming it up a little bit, and uh, I think that just helps it out look just a little bit more. So there's the you know the before and the after with the face and the hair, and then here if we let's just have some fun. Um, I love images with, the, I don't think I've ever shot a photo with a veil before. I think I'm going through, it looks like fun and I really like the images. Uh, let's go to curves and I'm going to add some blue and some green into the eyes. So some green, go here into our blue, there we go, really pull that into the eyes. I'm going to hit command I on that layer mask and then here I'm going to paint white on the layer mask just like right in this side of there. I'm going to leave it kind of like I'm going to not fill this all the way to the edges of the eye. Um, I think the saturation of color in an eye tends to be peak right around the middle of the eye. So I have it like kind of fall off towards the outsides and uh, even towards the top. You know, it's eye color is really cool. I mean, if you stare at your eyes in the mirror a lot or other people's eyes, um, <laughs> you can see that like there are different like color strains and things like that within the same eye. So um, something just kind of keep in mind of whenever you're coloring eyes. It's generally not a good idea to just be like, click, uh, because there's a lot of variation in there. So if you want it to look a little bit more realistic, just uh, you know, spend a little bit more time making some variation in there, and uh, that's going to help out. All right. Well, I do like the idea that, uh, that we had originally here of maybe of making some of these areas a little bit darker. Let's look at the before and after real quick. So there's the before and the after. And I do really like the idea that we had going on of you know, like how we're going to darken the areas around uh, to make the subject just stand out a little bit more. But what I want to do is just kind of do that afterwards. So we're going to bring that detail in and then kind of darken it afterwards. It's just going to give me a little bit more control. So let's go to a curves adjustment layer. Click and drag that down just a bit, just like that. Then I can hit Command I and then here, let's say use our gradient tool. I'm going to use a foreground or a linear gradient. So hit G for the gradient tool, click on your linear gradient, and then up here in your gradient editor, uh, click on foreground to transparent. And then I'm going to hit uh, D for my default color. So white is going to be my default color. Basically, I just made a, a gradient, sorry, curves adjustment layer that's darker. And then I made an invisible layer mask. So I'm going to have to paint white on my layer mask now. And I'm using the gradient tool to do so. So I'm just going to click here. And I'm going to hold the shift key as I come down. And that's just going to allow me to like build this gradient in. There we go. So what I'm doing is, in, in essence, trying to like repeat the same idea, 
that the original author had here, um, just with just a little bit more detail there in the shadows and a little bit more color. All right, and there we are. Cool, and let's go ahead and put this in our group too. So that's kind of like the original idea. So let's see what this looks like before and the after here. Here's, I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and just click on the eyeball on your background. So there's the before and the after. So we can see that's exactly what we wanted to do. Nothing wrong with the original one. We just said, hey, if you wanna bring out a lot more detail and do some color work, this is how you do it. And that's how you do it. So there we go, guys. Thank you so much for watching Flurn. If you guys had some of your images that really did have a lot of detail there in the blacks that you were able to bring up with one of these techniques, please just leave it in a comment down below because I'd like to see it because it's cool when I see the things that you learn here and then you apply them to your own life and it's just cool for everyone. Thanks so much, guys. I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone. It's just cool, dang it. Just do it. What? I don't know. Just do it. Okay, fine. It will. Okay. 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 For more information on this episode, go to flurn.com. While you're there, be sure to check out our pro tutorials. These are the most in-depth Photoshop tutorials available on the internet. If you want one for free, just sign up for our newsletter following the link right down below and it'll be delivered to you instantly. We also feature exclusive interviews, written contents, inspiration from people like you as well as professional photographers and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.